Just a brief overview of the fertility treatments available for men with Kerman syndrome or HH. Um, they can be split into two broad categories, either hormone replacement therapy just for the testosterone or fertility treatments. There are six forms of hormone replacement therapy available, only four of which are, would be effective for people with Kerman syndrome or HH. So the hormone replacement therapies are the gel, the patch, the injection, the implant, the tablet or the nasal spray. Now the tablet and the nasal spray are practically useless for people with Kerman syndrome because there's just nowhere near the levels of testosterone you need. They're really just for people with late onset hypogonadism which need a little bit of topping up later in life. They're absolutely completely ineffective for people with Kerman syndrome. That leaves us with the gel or the patch which effectively the same thing. The patch is just gel in a convenient little plaster which you can put on every day. In theory this gives you a nice steady testosterone level every day and it shouldn't get the highs and lows, it should be nice and constant. Though some people, the side effects or drawbacks could be with the patch, it gives you a visible patch so, so some people may ask why you're using it. And the gel, some people find it's difficult, takes, takes too long to dry, can give you skin irritation at, at, and excessive hair growth if you use it for too long and for some people think it does not give you a high enough dose. Then you've got the injection or the implant. The implant is less popular, but that lasts for six months, taken under local anaesthetic deep into the buttock or the hip. It's slow release tablets, and they give you, it does give you a nice steady dose after, over the six month period. It, most people find it quite effective, but you do have to have a little, a very small scar at the injection side. So if you have it for too long, you may start building up a little bit of scar tissue around there. And sometimes, if they're not put in deep enough, they can work themselves work their way out. But most people I speak to seem to find them quite effective. But it's not doesn't seem the most common form. It takes it back to injections, which are either going to be fortnightly, monthly, normally in the form of sustenon, which is a common one, or more getting far more common these days, especially in the United Kingdom and Europe and Asia, is nibido, which is a three monthly injection, which sometimes can be taken over six months. You can actually spread the dose out. One injection can last between three and six months. It does depend how well your body takes to testosterone and how, how much your body actually needs testosterone. At the moment, libido is not available in the United States. And last time I spoke to a specialist, he seemed to be the impression that the FDA are never going to license, license it in the United States. It looks like it's going to be a very long time before the video is going to be available in the United States, even though it is a very effective injection. And people in Europe and the United Kingdom have been using it for a long time, well, almost two years now, uh, with, I, this, well, the specialists I've talked to here in the United Kingdom have not heard of any serious side effects by using it. All it gives you is a nice steady dose of testosterone over the three-month or to six-month period, so you can have one injection, then forget about it for a very long time, and it should give you a nice steady dose. It's very important that whatever method you use, that you actually have your testosterone levels checked at the start of the cycle, at, or at the end of the cycle, or preferably in the middle of the cycle. Because there's no point just having just taking it and assuming your testosterone levels are fine. The aim is to make sure your testosterone levels are at an adequate level for the whole treatment cycle. One of the problems with Sustanon, it is found that it gives you a nice high dose only for about four or five days, then goes down too quickly. So if you take it over the month period, you might end up with only two weeks of having a proper or an adequate level of testosterone, and the other two weeks you could be under your levels could be too low. So it's very important, whichever method you use, that you actually take. Your doctor actually monitors the testosterone level. There's no point just taking the injection every three weeks, four weeks, or every six months in the video and not actually knowing that your testosterone level is adequate. Usually, you can actually feel it yourself. You, you, you get the high when the injection goes in and it gradually wears off. Your energy levels go down, the libido goes down, or your, which, which of a better word, your potency can go down. So, you actually possibly know yourself, even before you take a blood test. Uh, your testosterone levels are dropping too low. And it's very important to maintain your testosterone levels. Not just for male sexual function, testosterone is important for other areas of the body, 
most importantly, bone density and bone growth. So even if the male sexual function is less important for you, it is very important to maintain the bone density and bone strength, and you have to have adequate testosterone levels for that. That is something we're going to mention again, maybe in another video soon. The other area are fertility injections, which are not effective for everybody with Kalman syndrome, but there is a quite good track record to for their for their use. Now, it's either it's normally a case of giving you instead of giving you the testosterone, they give you the pituitary hormones, LH and FSH, which are missing or in very very low levels in Kalman syndrome, and using them to get the testes back into action and for them to function normally and to produce at first their own testosterone and then their own sperm. It can take 6 months, 12 months or even 18 months for these treatments to work but the whole idea is to get the testes or in the women, the ovaries, to function again. In Kamen syndrome they never actually have the right signals to function properly so with the fertility injections they're given LH, FSH hopefully in order to kick start the testes or the ovaries in order to, to function correctly so this means first giving them LH to try and get the testosterone or for the men or estrogen progesterone for the women to try and get the ovaries and testes to start functioning again and then once that works adding in FSH which initiates sperm production for the men or egg release for the women and hopefully that for a lot of a lot of us with cancer can induce a certain level of fertility. For some of us that can actually be normal fertile levels, so you can actually have unassisted pregnancies, unassisted con conception, or if they if they're not quite as effective, normally you might have to go through some sort of IVF, but this gives you a more natural sperm production, so it actually gives you your own sperm to go through IVF so, that, so you know there's no need to go through adop adoption or any other forms of surrogacy pregnancy, you can actually produce your own sperm. It does take, it can take, as I say, up to 18 months to do, but there is quite a good record for them working. They can be expensive, especially the FSH, so it's not available everywhere, but when they are available, it's, it's, it's usually a pretty good idea to try them. It's a pretty good alternative than using testosterone, because it gives you a far more natural level, because your testes themselves are producing their own testosterone, so you don't need to have any you don't need to take any more injections because hopefully your testes will produce all the testosterone it needs. Um I think that's it for Tommy. Okay, bye bye.